Blake Lovell and Chris Lee of Southeastern 14 here. We are continuing our SEC football schedule previews for 22. Today, I think, marks the halfway point in our preview series. Today, we get to the Florida Gators. Blake, one of several SEC teams that had coaching changes. It is never dull in Gainesville, and this figures to be a fascinating season for Billy Napier as he has his debut season as the Gators head coach. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll certainly dive into more of kind of a personnel preview and all that stuff in the coming weeks. But as we've been doing, looking at the schedules, um, this is an interesting one to me. I, I tell you, I, I circled this one when I started going through them because, you know, I, I guess we could pair this to, to recent seasons. I'd have to go back and look at it. But not often you see a team only leave the state one time until November. Um, you know, and I think they only play three games outside of the state of Florida all season. That's going to be Tennessee A&M and Vanderbilt. Um, so, you know, th- there's a chance to, I think, have an interesting season for Florida. I think, again, we'll talk more about the personnel and everything. But we I mean, just look at how the schedule sets up. Six of their first seven games are at home. Um, again, they don't, they don't leave the state except for once until November. Um you know, that's uh, that's an interesting setup for, for a team, I think, especially in, in the college level, which we know fan support and atmosphere and all that can can play a big role. So uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's only going to be three or four games that are potentially hostile, one at Tennessee. Uh, Florida State, I presume Florida will have some people in the building and at Vanderbilt where, you know, for years now the Commodores have been overrun in their own stadium. So I, I think there might be more Florida fans in Nashville than Vandy fans. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of games where Florida is going to have the numbers in their favor in the stands for whatever that's worth. But, Blake, we have talked about some of these teams playing schedules where there's a lot of built-in wins. Not really that so much for the Gators because Utah's on the schedule. That's a preseason top 10 team by people. Florida State, top 40 by a lot of people. That, again, on the road. You've got USF, which is probably the one of the easiest games on the schedule, but they're not a, a total pushover. And then you've got Eastern Washington, which is one of the better teams in the FCS, ranked in the top 20 in, in the polls that I have seen. Now, I don't think Eastern Washington is going to come in and, and beat Florida, but point being, that's probably a tougher FCS game that you're going to see most of the teams in the league play. Yeah, I think what they they have in their advantage is, again, to me, is you just look at it, it's based on new coach. Um, I think Florida's still got the personnel to win games, and I think it's just with how it sets up, getting those games where they're getting them, I think is important. We always talk about that. Like Utah, yes, you would expect them. Like you said, there there's high expectations for Utah, but – I think at least just getting that in game one, you know, you probably feel better about that maybe than you would getting it in game four or five, because you feel like by that point, you know, that's, that's a team that has certainly found its groove, but even game one, you know, we've seen interesting game ones before where it's just, you know, first week of the season, you're still working some things out, even if you're expected to be a great team. Um, you know, and so I think that maybe sets up okay for Florida, just from that standpoint, it's just being able to, kind of have it set up that way. And then, like you said, even in Eastern Washington, getting them, you know, five weeks down the road, um, you know, that's that's something that probably plays a little bit maybe to your advantage too. So I, yeah, I mean, this is one where like, look, the, to me, the, the the biggest games, and obviously we're looking at it from a SEC standpoint, I mean, we're going to look at this and I think you look at that Kentucky game, right? Like that's game yeah. two. And I think a lot of that is going to depend on, what happens against Utah, right? I think it's, you know, Florida comes out and, you know, by some were to win that game or something. I mean, you're talking about having all the confidence heading into that Kentucky game. Um, you know, maybe if you lose to Utah, come up just a little bit short. That's a big game for the SEC East. Um, you know, so I think that's um, that's one you definitely circle. And then, like we said, I mean, they're I think they're very winnable games, you know, beyond that when you look at, game like uh, Missouri, you know, game like that, like you said, South Florida, I think they'll beat them. Eastern Washington still should be able to take care of business. So those first two games, uh, very intriguing just from a standpoint of, look, I mean, you know, best case scenario, two and O worst case scenario, you you could certainly be Oh, and two, uh, just based on the, the level of the competition you're playing there. Yeah. And we have noted that seasons take different turns. Like you look at Florida's <clears throat> last year and Florida was a really good team 
you know, the first half of the schedule took Alabama to the wire, beat Tennessee pretty decisively. By the end of the year, it was a, just a mess. You had a coaching change. You had all sorts of things. But I think you'd, you'd prefer, like, if you could order the schedule and you're Billy Napier, he would never say this publicly. I think you might rather have USF to, to open rather than Utah and maybe Eastern Washington in week two rather than Kentucky. But right off the bat, it's going to be tough. I mean, I, I think even if you go one and one, if you're Florida – you got to be feeling maybe okay, depending on how those go. Uh, then you get uh, probably a win in week three. Then you got a big swing game at Tennessee. And what I think could be one of the more interesting games on the schedule this year in the SEC, if not the country. I mean, these two teams are, are bitter rivals. Florida has owned that one for about the last 20 years. Uh, but Tennessee probably going to be a favorite at Knoxville in this one. And that'll be a good litmus test to see how far Florida has come in learning what Billy Napier wants his kids to do. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think unless something is, you know, changed by that point, that early in the season, Tennessee will be the favorite in that one. Um, but we always know, I mean, Tennessee-Florida games are always fascinating for a variety of different reasons, just given the the rivalry and everything. But, um, yeah, so, so, I mean, it does make that, that first group of games very important. Like we said, I think specifically Utah and Kentucky, um, you know, those are huge if you can – if you split them, that's probably what people would expect. You know, maybe you think you get one of those two. I think obviously Kentucky is probably the more likely of the two, but even then I think they're both going to be challenges. But once you get to this part of the schedule, you know, we have this road trip to Tennessee, that will be a challenge, but really again, then I think you go beyond that, right? Like we talked about Eastern Washington. Then I think you got two very winnable home games against Missouri and LSU. We said Mm LSU is probably a team that's going to take a little while to, I don't think they're going to get there this year more like a, you know, next year probably type thing for for Brian Kelly to completely revamp things maybe the way he wants it. I just don't think that's going to happen this season. Um, So I think those are two winnable games right there. And and obviously, you know, the game against Georgia, you know, that's always going to be a challenge, but you get a bye before that. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I I think that's, you know, that that part of the schedule to me is you have some very winnable home games. and, And that's what, like I said, six of your first seven at home, I'm not saying they're going to win all of them because I don't think it's going to happen, but um, that at least sets up a lot better, you know, getting those games against the Utah and the Kentucky, both in Gainesville versus, you know, if you're going to Utah, going to Lexington, I think that's much different. So, um, yeah, so I think in that regard, it sets up fine for Florida. Now, beyond that, you know, getting back to back games where you're playing Georgia and then going A&M, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So, you know, the thing that, stands out to me on the schedule is is most of the swing games that you could argue would be reasonably reasonably matched uh you know Kentucky kind of in that same stratosphere when you look at the preseason computer rankings as are the Gators LSU would be in there LSU kind of like Florida wild card with a coaching change and some uncertainty in some places South Carolina a team that that beat Florida a year ago that one's in Gainesville I think that's one of the things about the schedule that's nice if you're Billy Napier is a lot of the swing games are at home rather than on the road. Yeah. And I think that's always important. Like we said, cause you just know throughout the course of a season, you're going to have injuries. There's going to be a lot of things like that, that, that are going to, you know, develop and unfold and just having those games and some of those, those spots, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to have. And like I mentioned, I think having that bye week before Georgia, I don't think Florida's going to beat Georgia, you know, right now they wouldn't be the, the favorite by any means, but at least you have the buy right before that game. So that that's something too, that, that maybe you can play it up to your advantage, especially again, if you're coming off of, let's say you're coming off of two straight, you know, sec wins against Missouri and LSU, and maybe you get a buy going into that Georgia game, you know, your confidence is sky high and been a lot better about things. But then beyond that, you know, that's where, like we said, after October 15th against LSU, this is where, you know, for Florida, you play one true home game the rest of the way. Although, like you mentioned, I hate to say it, but uh, I think it'll probably be a home game in Nashville against uh, Vanderbilt, just depending on where maybe the Commodores are at that point. But I think that's where, you know, things get interesting with the schedule. And this is where I think Florida's going to have to do a lot of work up front because this back part, um, you know, like we said, I think beating Georgia will be tough. Winning at a and is going to be tough. Um, you know, I think the Florida state game probably a little challenging, uh, but you know, South Carolina, I think that's another intriguing team we've talked about, but I think at home, Florida's probably the favorite in that one. Um, you know, at Vanderbilt, I, I think Florida's the better team. So it's just, it's going to be interesting. Those swing games uh, you said it, I mean, that's, that's the best way to put it. There's always on for all of these sec teams, there's always some swing games, but like Florida specifically, 
up front. There are several of those swing games. Then I think you've even got one there against LSU. Um, then I think you could kind of classify that too, depending on where the Tigers are at. Um, yeah, so so I think it's, you know, really when you look at the schedule, like you said, there's really not maybe a lot of games you're going to look at and just be 100% all on board of Florida winning. Um, but, you know, they'll win, I think, a good chunk of these games. It's just some of these games, again, you know, really when you look at it, I mean, they're not going to be the favorite against Georgia, A&M. Um, you know, beyond that, though, I think, you know, Utah, like we said, opening the season, that, that may be one that's a little close. Um, but I don't know. I think there's... I just think the way the schedule sets up is not the worst in the world for Florida. And I think for a team that's kind of trying to find its way under a new coach, it's not a bad setup at all. I don't think. I don't know. I, I don't feel that way when I look at it again. I, I think to me, a lot of it is starting off with Utah and Kentucky, both of them in the road home, but I can, I can see where you're coming from. Um, Phil Steele has got them rated the 19th hardest schedule in the country. T- to me, it looks a little harder than that. Maybe it's back to what we said about Alabama. Like Alabama's schedule looks easier because it's Alabama. Maybe because Florida's down a little bit. Maybe not going to be in the preseason top 25, although you will see the Gators in some of those for sure. Uh, Maybe that's kind of what it is. I think the thing that sticks out to me, Blake, we talk about built-in wins. Not a lot of them on this schedule. I think you could argue South Florida's one, Eastern Washington probably one, although, again, that will not be a pushover in terms of FCS opponents, and Vanderbilt probably going to be one, but the Commodores have got a severe rebuild even for Vanderbilt. So I look at this, I mean, maybe Missouri's one you could argue that they're certainly going to be favored in with that being in Gainesville, but it's not a pushover. I think that's the thing when I look at this schedule. I think most of these games are going to be fairly interesting. I don't count Florida out of maybe any of them uh, other than maybe Georgia, and, and Georgia's got a lot to replace. But I don't see a lot that you just say, okay, we know Florida is going to win this game. And to me, that makes for a very interesting schedule. Yeah, no, I don't I don't disagree with that. Um, I'd probably give Florida at least six or seven wins right now just based on looking at the schedule. I won't say exactly where I would put them, but I just think that when we compare schedules, this is one where, look, because you are playing six of your first seven at home, I think that that is a situation where you're a team that does have some things you have to figure out, right? Like, I mean, they, again, I, I'm not, I don't expect Florida to win the SEC East or anything, but it, it just, to me, sets up better knowing that those games are at home. Now, look, I mean, yeah. it's, you know, if you're, if you lose your first two, does that home field advantage go down a little bit? Because maybe people aren't as interested, like, oh boy, this could be a long season. Sure. But I think with just the way it sets up, I, I, you know, not comparing it to anybody else because I don't have all the schedules in front of me, but can't imagine there's a lot of SEC teams that are playing six of their first seven at home and only leaving the state one time until they get to November. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's why I would be a little more optimistic for Florida to maybe get in a groove more than they would. Let's say if they, you know, game one's at home, game two on the road, three at home, four on the road, and you just flip flop, right? I think just having that consistency of play, yeah. going, all right, we're going to get three in a row at home to start the season. We're going to make a quick trip to Knoxville. We're going to get three more in a row at home. Um, I, I just think that the way it sets up, I, I'm with you. I, I don't, I'm not saying that I, th- I think they're going to be, you know, six and one or anything maybe after these first seven games. But I think just the way it sets up um, for a team that has a new coach and you're trying to find some sort of consistency or maybe find a groove early in the season, you know, a couple of different things go your way here. Let's say you beat Utah to start the season. You know, it's just a much different outlook. So it it is. Yes. It's a very, you know, it's one of those things. And, and I think, again, I I don't know. I just maybe am trying to be a little more optimistic with a team like Florida because of how their schedule sets up. And, again, we say this every time. It's like we're only going off of what we know right now in July, and we're only going off of what we see from these teams on paper. And I think for me, I'm like, all right, that stands out to me because some of these schedules, we've said, they don't, there's not really a lot that pops and you're just like, all right, maybe you just have to hope it goes with this way or this way. But I'm like, this is a, this is an identifiable trend that we see here for a team that's going to play six of its first seven at home. And I think that that's, I find that more interesting and maybe more optimistic for Florida uh, than I would in the opposite direction. Well, let me throw one other angle at you, Blake. Florida's given Tennessee fits. That one's going to be Knoxville. Expectations are going to be high for Tennessee. That That's a game where Tennessee had the better season a year ago than Florida. I don't think anybody would have debated 
that Tennessee was the better team at season's end. And again, a lot of this was schedule placement. That was early it's before the wheels came off in Gainesville. But Florida on the scoreboard won that one pretty easily, although I would argue that having watched that game, it was not as decisive as the score would have made it look. And then you've had another one because we talk about we've talked about this with Auburn some. You got a coach on the hot seat. Things have imploded badly at Auburn before. Uh, and when things go downhill, and you saw this in Gainesville last year, right? Florida lost some games it should not have lost, but you had a coach that was on the way out. You had all kinds of turmoil, and, and the wheels came off. Texas A&M's got a lot of preseason hype. With the way they're recruiting, with the money in the NIL, the expectations are building up on Jimbo Fisher. And that's one, even though it's in College Station, let's say Florida's got things moving in the right direction and uh, things are maybe not going so well at a and I'm, I'm not predicting this, but I'm just saying as I look at the schedule, that's when I'm looking at a little bit to go, hey, if, if you're going to call a – maybe a deep upset from this point in the season. And, and maybe it won't work out that way. Maybe, maybe by that time A&M is a national title contender, it's a different story. But that's an interesting one to watch too. Yeah, and I think it's you know our our default thus far is like if, if you don't have Georgia and Alabama on the schedule, right. you're, you're moving in the right direction, especially if you don't have Georgia and Alabama on the schedule and neither one of them are true road games, right? So that, you know, at least for Florida, I guess that is something they have that maybe some other teams we've gone through do not have, that they don't have to go to Georgia. They don't have to go to Alabama, um, but they do have to go to A&M, like you said. And yeah, I mean that, and look, we, we do say this every year, but like, there's going to be a team that underachieves. Um, yes. Maybe it's Florida, right? Like may, maybe it's Florida. Maybe they just start out 0-2 and things just head in the wrong direction. They're one and three, you know, going into an Eastern Washington game against a, a pretty good team. And, you know, all of a sudden it, maybe that's how it plays out. I don't know, but um, could it be A&M? Could it be Tennessee? You know, could that be the team that, that maybe underachieves? I, I've said before, I don't think so. I think that Tennessee is going to be really good, but um, you know, but there are some of the other teams like LSU could exceed expectations. Maybe yeah. Brian Kelly gets them, you know, quickly. And that game looks a lot tougher by the time we get to October 15th. It's going to be tough. I mean, it's, it's LSU, but um, you know, maybe, maybe they're the surprise team by that point in mid-October. So, yeah. And, and that's why, you know, we do these schedule previews, but again, all we have to go off of is what we know now. And what we know now is, like I said, I, I think there's some, there's definitely some challenging games on the schedule, but um, you know, still probably one of the tougher schedules nationally when you just put it in the context of the SEC uh, and knowing you're going to play an SEC schedule. But I think overall, you know, it's a, it's a new regime and, we don't really know what to expect necessarily from, you know, maybe a lot of just schematic stuff and all that um, and how that's going to go up against some of these other teams. But I think there's, there's more reasons for optimism. If you're Florida uh, at this point, I think just having, you know, a fresh start and to me getting a schedule that plays out the way this one does um, where you have a chance to maybe make some early strides and, and build that momentum in Gainesville, um, maybe that sets up nicely for the, for the Gators. Yeah, and, and the right coach too. I think I think Billy Napier brings a lot of things that they have needed in Gainesville for a while. So we'll be interested to see how this goes. Again, we are going to preview all SEC teams' schedules. We'll have more previews on the teams themselves down the line. But be sure and if you have not heard your favorite team discussed yet, it's either coming or it's in the past. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel check our videos out, and we'll see you again with our next schedule preview.